16. Claim karma, claim karma, keva karma ti, kava yopi atra mohita, tate karma pravakshami, yat kyatva moksha yes, so what? Three synonyms. Okay, let's just uh, close this a minute. Kim, what is karma action? Kim, what is a karma in action? Iti, thus, kavaya, the intelligent, api, also, atra, in this matter, mohitaha, are bewildered, tat, they, te, unto you, karma, work, pravakshami, I shall, exp I shall explain, yat, which, yatva, knowing, moksha, yase, you will be liberated, ashibat, from ill fortune. Translation. Even the intelligent are bewildered in determining, determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. Prabhupada, by his divine grace, he said back to Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, action in Krishna consciousness has to be executed in accord with the examples of previous bona fide devotees. This is recommended in the 15th verse. What such actions should be independent will be explained in the text to follow. To act in Krishna consciousness, one has to follow the leadership of authorized persons who are in line of disciplic succession, as explained in the beginning of this chapter. The system of Krishna consciousness was first narrated to the sun god. The sun god explained it to his son Manu. Manu explained it to his son Ikshvaku. And the system is current on this earth from that very remote time. Therefore, one has to follow in the footsteps of previous authorities in the line of disciplic succession. Otherwise, even the most intelligent men will be bewildered regarding the standard actions of Krishna consciousness. For this reason, the Lord decided to instruct Arjuna in Krishna consciousness directly. Because of the direct instructions of the Lord to Arjuna, Anyone who follows in this footsteps of Arjuna is certainly not bewildered. It is said that one cannot ascertain the ways of religion simply by imperfect experimental knowledge. Actually, the principles of religion can only be laid down by the Lord Himself. Dhamam Tu Shakshara Bhagavad Pranitam, Shaman Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3, Verse 19. No one can manufacture a religious principle by imperfect speculation. One must follow in the footsteps of great authorities like Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Manu, the Kumaras, Kapila, Prahlad, Bhishma, Shukadeva Goswami, Yamaraj, Janaka, and Bali Maharaj. By mental speculation, one cannot ascertain what is religion or self-realization. Therefore, out of causeless mercy to his devotee, the Lord explains directly to Arjuna what action is and what inaction is. Only action performed in Krishna consciousness can deliver a person from the entanglement of material existence. So the translation once again is, even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what action, what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. So I just recite the uh, Mangalacharan prayers. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Gaurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rapakadamayam Tadati Swapitantikam Mande ham shi guru, shi yuta padakamalam, shi guru vaishtavam scha, shi rupam sagrajatam, sagana raguratam vitam tam sajivam, sadvaitam savadutam, parijana saitam krishna chaitanya devam, shi radha krishna padan, sagana ladita shivishakam vitam scha, hey krishna karuna sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagapate, 
Gopishwara, Gopi Kakanta, Radha Kanta Namustate, Tapta Kanchana Gorange, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vishabana Sutta Devi, Pranamami Adipiye, Mancha Kalpa Tarubyascha, Vipa Sindhubya Egacha, Patitana Bhavanebhyo, Vaishta Vibhyo Namo Namaha, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Charaswami Tinamine, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namase Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Sunyavadi, Pascha Chadishitarine, Jai Shri Krishna Jaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advita Kadadhar, Shivasari Gaur Bhaktivinna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining in. And um, thank you for tuning in. And those who recited earlier on, Sarish Ben, Makan, and uh, Madhava, thank you very much. So I also pray to all the devotees who are sort of listening to this, uh, if I could take your blessings so I may be able to speak something pleasing that uh, pertains to the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his devotees. Hare Krishna. So at this particular verse, uh, the word karma is recited at least three times. So there's the word karma and the word akarma. Karma is action, and a karma is an action. Of course, there's several types of karma that we, although it's described in uh, many of the other Puranas and Srimad Bhagavatam, but there's three particular karmas that uh, we normally deal with. The karma, which uh, Krishna is talking here, as action. There's the karma, which is in action. And there's also vikarma. Vikarma is action which causes sinful activities, which causes bondage to this material world. So here, Krishna, when we talk about karma, most people think karma is generally something, when something bad happens, or you've done something bad, something bad will happen to you. And you may say, well, why is that uh, you know, the case, you know, if you're doing something good to others, but you still get a reaction? But within this material world, there's always a cause and effect, certain things that we cannot understand or even comprehend because it's so beyond our sort of intelligence. But here where Krishna is talking about karma, karma we normally refer to doing any day-to-day -day activities, fruitive activities. So sometimes what is karma? What does actually karma mean? So karma is normally referred to any activities pertaining to the uh, material activities of the body itself. So karma could be doing, going about doing your day-to-day -day job at work. It may not be related to a spiritual environment. You could be working in the Ministry of Defense, or you could become a plumber, or you could be an architect. But that is all part of your day-to-day -day activities in your life, your duty, your dharma, as uh, I suppose, working in order to uh, attain some uh, funds to provide for the family itself. But then Krishna is actually explaining later on. If I could just ask everybody to mute yourself, please. If you're, if you're not muted. Sorry. Thank you. So Krishna actually is uh, explaining about action here. So whatever action we're doing, you try and do that in a way which is pleasing to the Supreme Personality of Gadot. In a, another verse by Krishna Jarjuna, he explains, whatever you do, whatever activities you perform, whatever you offer, do that as an offering to me. So in other words, even if you're cooking, you may think, well, I don't have the time to actually present this offering to Krishna you know, everybody's hungry. But even if you think in your mind, Krishna, my dear Lord, you're the Supreme Lord. With your, you know, with your causeless mercy, you've provided everything for me. I offer it back to you because you are the supply of everything, whether it's the, uh, the food supply, whether it's the facilities that we have in the house, whether it's the air that we breathe, 
the rain that uh, falls onto the grains that produces the harvest that we eat from. Christ is providing everything to us. But when we do whatever activities we do, we do it as an offering to Krishna itself. So you may say, well, if you're working in a ministry of defense in the army, how could I offer that as a service to Krishna? But actually, you're actually defending your country, just like Krishna is telling Arjuna, you have to fight for Dharma. If somebody was to unpleasantly attack mm -hmm. this country, you have to protect yourself. So it's so important that you continue your duty not only materially, but spiritually, which is the main focal point of your life. As we mentioned earlier on um, in this particular verse, whatever thoughts or you have at the time of death, that body you will attain based on that nature of your thoughts. But for one who's always remembering Krishna at the time of death, that nature of Krishna he will attain without a doubt. And this is uh, Krishna's promise. When you actually read this particular purport, Krishna actually, or oh, Srila Prabhupada explains a lot about the importance about leadership. So at the beginning of the verse, Krishna says, the Supreme Personality of God has said, I first spoke this imper imperishable science to the sun god, Vivashvan. Vivashvan instructed it to Ikshvaku, and Ikshvaku instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. So in this way, the Supreme Science was passed from one sort of a generation to another generation, but it wasn't diluted. There was nothing added to it. It was actually pure words that were coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It was nothing mundane. Everything was spiritual about it. And that spiritual science was all to do about the Puranas. It's all to do about Salant and Dharm. What to do in the religious duties for everyone to follow for many generations to come. So the importance is that it's coming from the Supreme Personality of God. It has to be an authority. Without an authority, you can never know if it's authentic or not authentic, whether it's bona fide or not bona fide. So as a person who's seeking for spiritual values, you may think, well, how do I know this is actually authentic? So, yeah. How are you? Yeah, so I just want to You have to put your mic on, please, Krishagi Mataji. Uh, so um, it's very important that you actually sorry, I just lost uh, where I was. Basically, you have to understand that the supreme authority is passing that spiritual knowledge which is unadulterated from one generation to another generation. And uh, you, I was uh, saying, how do I know that the particular spiritual master is bona fide? So once again, it depends on your desire. What is it that you want to do? Do you want to find out the truth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Or is it something that you want something very cheaply so you could go somewhere quite high in the spiritual world or some material opulence that you may want? or some benedictions that you may want. So there's that facility provided for you. Krishna says that the demigods are very pleasing or easily pleased. So if you do want anything, you can always go to the demigods. But that prayer to the demigods ultimately go to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even though uh, the person praying to that demigod may not know knowingly or unknowingly. But to understand the spiritual master, once again, you have to go to the parampara system. There are so many spiritual masters, so many uh, different spiritual lineage. You have the Brahma Sampradaya, you have the Lakshmi Sampradaya, you have the Kumara Sampradaya. You know, you may think which one is bona fide. But of course, we know these four Sampradayas are directly from Krishna himself. But then somebody may say, well, what about Swami Narayan? Are they not bona fide? What about uh, the other Sanatana of Hindu religion? Are they not bona fide? Ultimately, you've got to look at the Bhagavad Gita. What does it actually say in the Bhagavad Gita? Who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna. And anybody else is subordinate to Krishna. And it explains about the science of religion. It talks about who we are, who the, the body is, what happens to the body. Uh, what is it that's causing the body to become alive? And that's basically because of the soul, which is actually within the body itself, seated in the heart of every living entity. And that particle, that soul, is a particle of Krishna, as you all know. 
and it's not different from Krishna in many ways, but only on a quantity, it may not be as magnanimous as Krishna on a qualitative level, as all the qualities of Krishna. But unfortunately, because we're living in this material world, and life after life, we've accumulated so many anarthas, so many sinful activities. So, uh, we have the uh, the three modes of uh, nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance covering this consciousness, this pure consciousness. So because of that, we're under illusion to, to Maya that we do not understand who we are. So it's important that we approach a bona fide spiritual master. And to approach a bona fide spiritual master is so important because the bona fide, as we recite the uh, the prayers in the morning, the Guru Vrashtika prayers, Shaksha, Daridve, Nasamaista, Sastra, Uttastata, Bhavya, Devasadi. One should respect the spiritual master to be, good as, to be as good as God. This is because he is the confidential servant of the Lord. This is acknowledged and revealed by all the authorities and revealed in all the scriptures and followed by all authorities. So it's so important that the spiritual master is not an ordinary person, he's a confidential servant of the Lord. And he does not change anything at all. Um, has anybody got the microphone on? If I could ask you to mute yourself, please. Unfortunately, I don't have the facility to unmute everybody or mute everybody. But anyway, I'll carry on. Um, it's important that we actually follow the authority. To find the authority, once again, one should seek a bona fide spiritual master, inquire from him submissively, render service unto him. The spirit self, uh, the self realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Is there uh, feedback on my phone? Is everyone can hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, just like uh, when you go to school, you have a special, uh, you have the teacher, the teacher teaches you subjects of math, English, science, biology. The teacher doesn't manufacture anything that may be benefiting for himself or the students. He teaches his students exactly what's laid out in the textbooks. There's no reason to dilute it or add anything to it at all, because otherwise it wouldn't be authentic at all. Imagine doing a math formula and it gives you the wrong formula and say, oh no, I've got an easy formula, just use this formula. Then obviously the results will be the same. Similarly, in English, you have the different subjects, you have literature, you have grammar. If you don't actually follow the instructions of the, uh, your teacher, then of course your examination, you will fail. So that's why special master is very important that we actually follow the uh, the, I suppose, the instructions of the spiritual master wholeheartedly and to serve the spiritual master as well at the same time. If one doesn't uh, fail to do that, if one fails to do that, then the progression of the spiritual life will be very difficult in this uh, endeavor to search for the truth. Um, so in this uh, particular verse, it mentions uh, the 12 margins, Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Manu, Dikamaras, Kapila, Prahlad, Bhishma, Sukadev Goswami, Yamaraj, Janaka, and Bali Maharaj. But there's something very special about these 12 margins. Even though they're great souls, great personalities, they're sort of spiritual leaders in the uh, discipline of the Sanatana but each one of them had a spiritual master as well. Even Narada Muni had a spiritual master, he had Lord Brahma, even Lord Shiva had a spiritual master, he was taking instructions from uh, Vishnu, Kapila once again, he took instructions, Prahlad Maharaj, he took instructions from Narada Muni. So even the great Mahajans are taking instructions from the spiritual master. And just like uh, the spiritual, uh, just like Krishna himself, he was also taking instructions from his spiritual master as well, Sandipani Muni. This is important because if you don't take that uh, instructions, Krishna is actually setting an example to everyone. So if you don't set an example, Krishna 
it's not if he doesn't set an example he ex mentions in one of the verse this whole world will come into ruination he has even though he's not duty banned by any any sort of rules or regulations is uh, although he's the prime principle the uh, the the uh, the uh, divine instructor of all his principles in the first place he just no need for him to follow them itself but as an example to all the people who want to sort of serve Krishna, he sets an example to them. So Krishna and Balaram, they actually went to Sandipani Muni school and they were instructed in the art of science, the art of war, the art of uh, spiritual values. So Dam, just like you would send your child to a Brahmachari Ashram, Gurukul. So Krishna and Arjuna also went to the Gurukul as well. And so did many other of the Shatra warriors that went to Guru Kul warrior. They were learning from uh, Dronacharya on the uh, instructions of the, uh, the uh, peers of the dynasty. Now, one of the uh, verses that actually mentioned uh, was this particular verse, Dharma to Shakshar Bhagavad Pranitam. It mentions that, that also Krishna, although he's the principle of all religion himself, he is beyond this. Uh, principles himself. So I'm just going to share you this Bhagavatam, Canto 6, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 19. And the verse reads, Dharma tu shakshal bhagava pranitam nave vidu rishoyo napi devaha nasida mukya sura manushya kutanu vidyadara charandaya Real religious principles are enacted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although fully situated in the mode of goodness, even the great rishis who occupy the topmost planets cannot ascertain the real religious principles, nor can the demigods or the leaders or Siddha Loka to say nothing of the suras, ordinary human beings, Vijayadaras and Charanas. So just like uh, Lord Brahma, when it was manifested from the uh, lotus flower, which was, uh, which came from the navel of Lord Vishnu, he looked around him and he didn't know exactly what was his purpose, what he was doing there. He was so confused. So he went down the stem of the lotus flower and he came across a big ocean. And then even then he was still bewildered. And then through meditation, uh, instructions by Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu told him to meditate, and after many, many thousands of years of meditations, he came to understand who he was, what his purpose was in life, and who Lord Vishnu was, and how he was subordinate to Lord Vishnu. So even though the Supreme Creator creates everything, we also see like the great uh, demigods, like Lord Brahma, sometimes we recognize Lord Shiva as a demigod as well, to be still subordinate to Krishna because they have to follow the principles of whatever Lord Vishnu says. So this is a very important verse that we should also understand as well. Uh, I'll just quickly read through my notes. So once again, going back to this particular verse, <clears throat> we mentioned about action and inaction. Action is referred to karma and inaction is referred to a karma. So karma is referring to activities that you may do that does not incur any sinful activities at all. So supposing if you are defending dharma and you have to kill somebody who is trying to attack you, unfortunately incidents have this, like this have happened in the past, but you won't get any sinful reactions at all. The reason being because you are upholding dharma but at the same time it is not your responsibility to go out killing people just because they don't believe in god that would be a sinful activity and it's not recommended in the shastras at all and neither are you a kshatriya you're a brahmana but as a brahmana or as a vaistava rather a vaistava is beyond a brahmana and he has the responsibility of protecting dharma as do Brahmanas as well, because they were the advisors to the kings in the days of old. So a karma is in action activities, which does not incur any sinful activities at all. But at the same time, a devotee always thinks that whatever he's done, 
He feels that he's committed sinful activities and he prays for forgiveness. He prays every day to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although he pure, pure, prays for purification and devotion, at the same time, praying to the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the chanting of the Holy Name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He's actually freed from sinful reactions, but it has to be done in a state of mind with purity as well. So many times we may find that chanting our japa is very difficult because our mind is always flickering. Arjuna tells Arjuna, you know, it's so difficult to control the mind. You know, and not, so wherever the mind, Krishna is saying, for the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, Krishna, and, and to subdue it, I think it's more difficult to control the mind than to control the wind. So he's saying how difficult it is to control the mind. The mind is always hankering for different desires, thoughts that uh, are not pleasing sometimes, sometimes thoughts which are pleasing. And also at the same time, as you're just saying, well, it's sometimes maybe even possible to control the mind and to control the wind. You know, in the days of old, great shatras had great powers just by the recitation of mantras, the brahmanas, could perhaps chase night to day or day to night, uh, withhold the rain falling, etc. But to control the mind is very difficult. So Krishna tells Arjuna, for this restless mind, you know, you must try and control it wherever the mind wanders. Due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly control it and bring the mind back under control as well. Sorry, just one minute. Let's, uh, Take a little bit of water. Thank you. So Krishna is telling Arjuna, you know, must control the mind wherever the mind wanders to, to its flickering nature. One must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. So Krishna also gives them the example, like the tortoise. The tortoise is in a shell and its limbs are, you know, coming out of the shell, its heads, its legs, and so forth. But when the tortoise is in danger, it withdraws itself, it withdraws its limbs within the, to the shell itself. So Krishna is telling Arjuna, if one can control the senses, uh, refrain the senses, just like uh, the tortoise withdraws its limbs, then of course you're in a, a situated situa a situation where you could actually control the mind and your senses. Now, the other verse, the other karma that we always refer to when we say, oh, bad karma, you know, when somebody done something sinful, then he gets a reaction immediately. And that is known as a weak karma, sometimes known as bad karma or sinful karma. And that happens generally due to our impious duties in our previous life, our misdeeds in this life, offenses that we may have committed to other devotees or to non-devotees even, it's considered that the greatest sinful reaction one could uh, acquire is when they cause harm to a cow or when they cause distress to another human being. <clears throat> even though he may not be a devotee, as, pract as practicing devotees, we try and see the supreme soul within the hearts of every living entities, whether he's an atheist or a devotee, we try and see with equal vision, just like in the verse it says, the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision, a humble and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, or a dog eater. So it's so important that we actually see everyone as a part of our sort of Krishna. So therefore, <coughs> that refrains us from talking very ill of anybody, uh, talking harshly to somebody, treating somebody very harshly, very badly, rudely. Sometimes you may say, well, you know, I come to the temple and devotees could be sometimes not always pleasing. But sometimes it's also understanding that every devotee is going through a different gradual process in their spiritual lives. Some may be very neophytes in their early stages of life. Some may have uh, been practicing for many, many lives, uh, many years. And even so, somebody new, new brahmachari, you find that they become very automatically very humble. They become very respectful towards other people. You notice that a lot in a lot of bhaktas who join the temple. And why is that? Because 
they are very, very uh, much inclined to the spiritual philosophy. They want to become or dedicate their lives into Christian consciousness. They realize some of the activities they've done in their previous life, sinful activities, uh, drinking, meat eating, gambling, illicit sex, has caused them to be very resentful in their life, become very remorse, become, um, uh, how do you call it, guilty. So therefore they come to that stage in their spiritual life. I want to take my life very seriously. And if you have that mood, that mentality, I want to take my life very seriously. I want to take my life in such a way that I could uh, be with Krishna all the time, think of Krishna all the time, see him in everything that I do, see, every, see Krishna in everything. Uh, then you actually come to that Brahma, Prasanatma, Buddha stage. You know, as you see that Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. It's so important because if you advance in your spiritual life, you have to try and free yourself from sinful reactions. Now, people say, well, you know, I have committed sinful reactions. Why don't I just pray to Tulsi Marani? She will free me from my sinful reactions. But of course, you know, sinful reactions can be freed eventually when you become more spiritualized. But if you are actually committing sinful activities on the strength of uh, the holy name, it's considered to be one of the offenses, one of the 10 offenses of uh, chanting of um, 10 offenses of chanting of the holy name. So one must avoid uh, the offense of uh, committing sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Sinful activities could be this, the inclination of being greedy, becoming selfish, um, desiring to be uh, more superior to other people as well. It could be even uh, sinful reactions in your mind as well. It doesn't have to be actual personal activities. It could be actually just within the thoughts of the mind. Of course, the level of civil reactions that you may get will be depending on the level of uh, your civil activities. But ultimately, to free ourselves from Krishna consciousness, as Krishna is mentioning here, is to surrender to the spiritual master. The spiritual master, by his causeless mercy, you receive the benediction of Krishna. By receiving the benediction of Krishna, you're actually fulfilling your duty as a human being, freeing yourself from material activities, but freeing yourself from this repeated birth and death, this uh, cycle of samsara, where you can be born into different species of life, 8,400,000 species of life. Who knows what we could be in our next life? Could be a human being, or could be like a little toad, or could be a worm in a stool, could be a plant. Who knows, you know, sometimes we could uh, contemplate on this again and again so many times, but we're just very fortunate that this we've got this rare form of human life and we have to utilize this rare form of human life to serve Krishna using our mind, using our intelligence, using all our senses, doing all the things that we can by reading, associating with the devotees, by practicing Krishna consciousness, uh, by taking the instructions from the spiritual authorities, by reading the scriptures and absorbing exactly what it is that uh, we're learning from this. One beautiful example uh, I have, sometimes you may commit civil activities, you may get a civil reaction. I want to show you um, this, uh, many of you have read the Krishna book, uh, and there's one particular chapter is always quite fascinating. It's the story about the large lizard that was found in the well when Krishna's uh, grandsons were playing. Um, they found this giant, beautiful looking lizard in the bottom of a well, empty well. And uh, they told Krishna and Krishna came and he touched the uh, lizard and automatically it transformed into a beautiful effulgent personality. And of course, Krishna is all knowing. He knows exactly the past, present, and future of every living entity. He actually explained, asked the uh, personality, "Who are you? You know, why are you had this form as a lizard and you've turned into this beautiful personality?" So, with your permission, I'm just going to read a little bit. Or, rather, would anybody like to read? Start if they could read this um, chapter on the story of King Riga. Would anybody like to read? Shall I, Prabhuji? Yes, yeah, sure. Could you read? Uh, could you see the screen share? Okay. Actually, yes. Yeah, starting from actually, yeah. 
Actually, this large lizard was King Negro. And when questioned is, by is the it, Sorry, Julie, it's uh, pronounced Riga. It's a silent N and Riga. Oh, oh, oh Riga. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> Krishna. Actually, this large lizard was King Riga, and Riga. And when questioned by the supreme personality of Godhead, he immediately bowed down before the Lord touching to the ground the helmet of his head, which was as dazzling as the sunshine. In this way, he first offered his respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord. He then said, my dear Lord, I am King Riga, Riga and son of King Ishvaku. If you have ever taken account of all charitable disposed men, I am sure you must have heard of my name. My Lord, you are the supreme witness. You are aware of every bit of work done by the living entities, past, present, and future. Nothing can be hidden from your eternal cognizance. Still, you have ordered me to explain my history, and I shall therefore narrate the full story. Shall I continue? Yes, Charlie. What is it? Hare Krishna. King Riga proceeded to narrate the history of his degrade, degradation caused by his karmakanda activities. He said that he had been very charitably disposed and had given away so many cows that the total was equal to the number of particles of dust on the earth stars in the skies or drops of water in a rainfall. According to the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies, a man who is charitably disposed is recommended to give cows to the Brahmanas. From King Riga's statement, it appears that he followed the principle earnestly However, as a result of a slight discrepancy, he was forced to take birth as a lizard. Therefore, it is recommended by the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita that one who is charitably disposed and desires to derive the benefit of his charity should offer his gifts to please Krishna. To give charity means to perform pious activities by which one may be elevated to the higher planetary systems. But promotion to the heavenly planets is no guarantee that one will never fall down. Rather, the example of King Riga definitely proves that fruitive activities, even if very pious, cannot give us eternal blissful life. As, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the result of work, either pious or impious, is sure to bind man unless the work is discharged as yajna on behalf of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes, carry on, Jolly. Uh, this okay. is the uh, important part of the uh, chapter. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, King Riga said, that the cows he had given in charity were not ordinary cows. Each one was very young and had given birth to only one calf. They were full of milk, very peaceful and healthy. All the cows were purchased with money earned legally. Furthermore, their horns were gold-plated. Their hoofs were bedecked with silver plating and they were covered with necklaces and with silken wrappers embroidered with pearls. He stated that these valuable de decorated cows had not been given to any worthless persons but had been distributed to first class brahmanas whom he had also decorated with nice garments and gold ornaments. Actually, if you could just stop there one minute, I'm just yes, going to skip yes. a little bit forward. Um, okay, because it's okay. quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. 
the king, yeah? Yes, the king. Okay, the king continued, in spite of all this, unfortunately, one of the brahmanas cows, one of the brahmanas cows that I had given in charity chanced to enter amongst my other cows. Not knowing this, I again gave it in charity to another brahmana. <laughs> As the cow was being taken away by the brahmana, its former master claimed it as his own, stating, this cow was formerly given to me. So how is it that you are taking it away? Thus there was arguing and fighting between the two brahmanas and they came before me and charged, and charged that I had taken back a cow. I had previously given in charity to give something to someone and then to take it back is considered a great sin, especially in dealing with Brahmana. When both Brahmanas charged the king with the same complaint, he was simply puzzled, puzzled as, how, as to how it had happened. Thereafter, with great humility, the king offered each of them a thousand cows, 100,000 cows in exchange for one cow. That was causing the fight between them. He prayed to them that he was then servant and that there had been some mistake. Oh, so he was their servant and there was some mistake. Thus, in order to rectify it, he prayed that they be very kind upon him and accept his, accept his offer in exchange for the cow. The king fervently appeared to the brahmanas not to cause his downfall into hell because of his, this mistake, a Brahmana's property is called Brahma, Brahma Swa. And according to Manu's law, it cannot be acquired even by the government. Both Brahmanas, however, insisted that the cow was theirs and could not be taken back under any condition. Neither of them agreed to exchange it for the 100,000 cows. Thus disagreeing with the king's proposal, the two brahmanas left the place in anger, thinking that their lawful possession had been usurped. After this incident, after the time came for the king to give up his body, he was taken before Yamaraj, the uh, superintendent of death who asked him whether he first wanted to enjoy the results of his pious activities or suffer the results of his impious activities. Seeing that the king had executed so many pious activities and charities, Yamaraj also hinted that he did not know the limit of the king's future enjoyment. In other, in other words, there would be practically no no end to the king's material happiness. But in spite of this hint, the king bewildered, decided first to suffer the results of his impious activities and then to accept the results of his pious activities. Therefore, Ram, Yamraj immediately turned him into a lizard. Hare Krishna. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Johnny. That was so nicely recited. So, if you're not familiar with the story, this is from chapter 54, 64 of the Krishna book. It's a very beautiful illustration to show you what could happen even unintentionally when you may be doing something very nice to, to in charity, giving away brahmanas, food, cows, but uh, a mistake unknowingly happens, but there is a reaction for this. And as we mentioned earlier on, we, Krishna, when he spoke to uh, the Supreme Science, he spoke to Vivishvan, Vivishvan spoke to Ikshvaku, Ikshvaku spoke to Manu, and King Riga was actually the son of King Ikshvaku, who was actually part of the Raghu dynasty, which Lord Ramachandra came from. So it just shows you exactly what the reaction could be by something unintentionally that could happen. So that's why, from this example, uh, King Riga, as this, as due to his um, mistake that he made, he was turned into a lizard. But luckily, Krishna knows that he was a great personality. And of course, 
Jiranamo, Brahmanya Devaya, Go, Brahmanya Taicha, Chikata Krishna Govinda Namo Nama. And Krishna is pleased to one who takes care and protection to his cows and to his Brahmanas. So not only was the king giving protection to the cows by giving them to the Brahmanas, he was also a very respectful king. So Krishna personally gave him a benediction that he could see him uh, personally. Um, so once again, in our action, whatever action that we do, we got to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's pleasing yeah. towards Krishna himself. Um, it's coming to the end now. Okay, that's the time. So is there any questions, anybody? Do apologize for the quick, um, or rather the very simple class today. I was just informed about the class yesterday. So although I should have prepared, which I did prepare, but because of my work commitment as well. So just, I'll just check on this chat. Yeah, there is disturbing background noise. Anyway, we got rid of it. Is there any questions? Otherwise, uh, kindly ask for your blessings. I may continue to give classes future. And also, please forgive me for any mistakes that I may have made as well. Jai Shamat Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Mancha Kapa Tarubya Shya Kripa Sindhubya Vicha Patitana Bhavanebya Vaishtavebya Namo Wishing you all a happy Diwali and a Happy New Year as well. Hopefully see you all during the uh, temple or wherever you may be. Have a wonderful, pleasing uh, spiritual festival. I just you. keep yeah. safe as well. Thank you for Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lovely class, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Thank you. everybody. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Babaji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you for today. Thank you. I'm going to shut the... Uh, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Jolie, for recitation. It was really nice of you. Thank, Thank you. you.